Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to be multiplying monomials and polynomials today. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we need to do a quick review of multiplying monomials. This is a question from our previous lesson. Um, negative 5x to the power 3y times 7x squared y squared. When we multiply monomial times a monomial, what we can do is just kind of put the number times the number, negative 5 times positive 7, and then the like bases multiply times each other, x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 2. y from the first term times y squared in the second term. And you can do this step, um, but we also showed a shortcut in the previous lesson that you can also skip from here to here just by adding the exponents. x to the power of 3 plus x squared, 3 plus 2 is 5, y, this is an implied y to the power of 1 times y to the power of 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. And the numbers get multiplied, negative 5 times positive 7 is a negative 35. So this, we are going to do this over and over and over when we multiply monomial times polynomials. I just want to show that as a quick reminder. All right, so let's actually multiply our first monomial times this polynomial. This polynomial has three terms, so we would call it a trinomial, but that's not really important. What we're going to do is multiply 3x, our monomial, times each term inside of the parentheses. That's what this means, 3x times everything. So we'll take 3x times 4x, 3x times 2y, and 3x times negative 5. Okay, see that this negative 5 is the third term, 2y is our second term, and 4x is our first term inside that polynomial. Notice we separate each of these with addition, okay, because these are being, although this is subtraction, that's the same as adding a negative. So we're going to separate each multiplication using addition. Now we'll just join together our terms. Now I'm not going to write out um, the step of saying this is 3 times 4 and x times x because I'm going to assume at this point that we've practiced a little bit with multiplying monomials. Instead, I'm going to skip from this to our final answer. But just to be clear, this is what we did. We did 4 times 3, or 3 times 4, I'm sorry, which is 12, x times x, which is x squared. 3 times 2 is 6, x times y is xy. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, and the x remains. All right? So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to look at more complicated polynomials as we move along. Here's negative 2a squared times 3a to the power of 3 minus 6a squared plus 7a minus 9. So with this one, we're going to do exactly what we did with the previous one. We'll take the monomial at the beginning and multiply it times each term inside the parentheses. Let's show this step by step. Negative 2a times 3a to the power of 3 plus negative 2a times negative 6a. Notice I'm separating with an addition symbol, and that negative stays with the term. Negative 2a to the power of 2, negative 6a to the power of 2. We're multiplying those two terms. Now we're going to multiply negative 2a times 7a and negative 2a times negative 9. Again, we separate each of these multiplication problems with addition symbols just to represent that they're going to be kept separate. All right, and then we just simplify. Again, I'm simplifying in one step, but as you see, it's negative 2 times positive 3 gives you negative 6 a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 3, just add the exponents, 3 and 2 is 5. Negative 2 times negative 6 gives you a positive 12, a to the power of 2, a to the power of 2 will give you a to the power of 4. And our next part, negative 2a squared times 7a, negative 2 times 7 gives us negative 14, a squared times a gives us a to the power of 3, and then negative 2 times 9 gives us a po or times negative 9 gives us a positive 18 and a squared. Um, now I'm separating this one here as you see negative 14a. So it says plus negative 14a to the power of 3. 
uh, for my final answer, you'll get rid of the parentheses so that it is just minus 14a to the power of 3. It means the same thing, but this is the way that we'll write it um, in standard form. Let's do um, a couple more, I guess just one more, and it's going to be one step more complicated than that. Our initial term here, x squared, y squared, z, has three variables, um, two of which have powers, and z has the implied power of one, and our polynomial has five terms. We're going to follow exactly the same step where our initial leading monomial gets multiplied times each term inside the parentheses. I'll show you that step by step. I'm going to have to use a smaller font because this gets a little bit, um, well, it gets kind of long. Let's see. So x squared y squared z times 2x to the power of 5. That's our first multiplication. Then we're going to separate that with an addition symbol or plus our first term times 4x squared y squared. And I'm going to, again, separate that with addition, x squared y squared z times our negative 2xy squared. Same thing again, addition symbol to separate, x squared y squared z times 3xyz. And then our last multiplication problem, again, separated by an addition symbol, x squared y squared z times negative 8z. And this is quite the long part of, of this solution. And we're going to reduce it down the same exact way we did before. 2, this is our multiplication question here that we're focusing on. 2 is the only coefficient, so it goes by itself there. Our x is multiplied, x to the power 5, x squared will leave us x to the power 7. This has no y's or z's in this term, so we just end up with the y's and z's from the first term, y squared z. All right. Second one here. Again, 4 is the only coefficient. It goes by itself. x squared times x squared is x to the power of 4. y squared times y squared is y to the power of 4. And z has no other z's to multiply with, so poor z is just left by itself again on the end. All right, third term or third multiplication. Negative 2 will be our coefficient. x to the power of 3 because we have x squared plus x. y to the power of 4 because we have y squared times y squared here and here, and z again has no z. Okay, these last ones, z will actually be doing something a little bit more. All right, this one here, now we're looking right there, x squared y squared z times 3xyz. And in this case, we have xyz, that's x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1, z to the power of 1. So we're really just adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 onto our exponents. So 3, our coefficient goes out front, and instead of having x squared, y squared, z, we'll have x to the power 3, y to the power 3, and z squared. And z times z is z squared. All right, and our final multiplication question, x squared, y squared, z times negative 8z. The negative 8 is going to go out front. The x's aren't changed. The y's aren't changed. The only, thing that, the only variable that changes here is z times z will give you z squared. I'm going to do just what I did in that previous question, where I get rid of these plus minus parentheses and just write them as minus. So instead of plus negative 2x to the power 3, y to the power 4z, it'll just be minus that term. And the same with the final term. And that's how we multiply a monomial times a polynomial.